Michael Schrag became interested in collaboration while working with his friend Rob Fulop on one of the first software prototypes of an interactive ad because they were the best of friends, respected each other, and wanted to work with each other, they thought their collaboration would be easy. They were wrong. Interested in the history of technology, I looked at how computers might evolve as a medium compared to, say, television and radio and print. And what do all those media have in common for their success? It was advertising. All of those media were advertising driven. So the logical question for me was, how come there are no advertiser-supported video games? How come there's no advertiser-supported software? So I went to the people who ran the company, the Washington Post company, and I was directed to the uh, president of Newsweek. And he, he loved the idea and said, we'll give you several thousand dollars to a prototype. And, and I knew exactly who I would want to do that prototype with. It was my friend Rob Fulop. He was a terrific video games designer. And I figured it was a perfect match. At that time, we were both, I think, 24. 25 years old, so there was a lot of uh, excitement about, wow, we get to go meet the president this week and pitch this idea, aren't we cool? And so I was sleeping on Rob's couch in his, in his uh, place in Palo Alto, and um, we began, quote, collaborating, close quote, to produce a prototype, and it was, frankly, one of the most frustrating experiences I had ever had. There wasn't a lot of shared vision of what we were making, because there was no models in the world to look at of what what an interactive advertisement would, would look like or be like. Uh, and that was where we got stuck, since there was no place in the world to point and say, ah, that, it's like that. You know, Mike would say, oh, it's like a magazine, you know, it's like a magazine, it's like a magazine. And it's like, well, gee, what do you do for a living? Well, I work at a magazine. And I was saying, well, it's like a game, it's like a game, it's like a game. Well, what do you do? Well, I make games. It, it just seemed like all these things were aligned for having a successful collaboration. And in fact, we were growing more and more frustrated both with the prototype and with each other. You know, when we degenerated to basically name calling and, and you know you just don't you just don't get it. You know, you know, and I couldn't believe and I think he also couldn't believe that we were just uh, completely completely uh, unsympathetic to the issues the other was holding as as cherished jewels. Basically we, we blew a week, maybe a week, maybe ten days of just iterations of crap. That was when we knew we were in trouble. When it actually became, when it actually became personal, is when we realized that this is stupid. Rob finally said, "You know, we should really see this guy, Bernie, Bernie DeCoven." So I said, "Let's go meet Bernie. Bernie will help us. You know, kind of part mini facility, part psychologist, part you know guru." And I said, "What? what Bernie is what? A therapist?" And he said, "No, no, no. Bernie has figured out an interesting way of." running meetings. He was one of the first people that discovered that you could use a computer to, to facilitate a meeting, put your, put your thoughts into a computer, in which case they then don't belong to anyone except the computer, then you can move them around as if they were, as if they were just uh, abstract thoughts on a computer with no owner. There is this uh, very fast-talking Michael Schrag who comes in and uh, seems to be just filled with uh, great knowledge and uh, ideas and uh, and uh, Rob starts introducing me to him, and I didn't really quite understand who he was, and I really didn't understand what they were trying to do, but I had already set up my computer because he told me to do that, and I had the projector ready to go. And um, we went into his, his house, and he had a, a Macintosh hooked up to a limelight projector, and a limelight projector was just an early precursor of something that could take an image on the Macintosh screen and blow it up and make it look like a you know regular slideshow, a regular theater production. And so, Rob and I were sitting down in Bernie's room. We, we turned down the lights, and basically Bernie told us to talk about what we were trying to do. Uh, okay. We're just generating the alternatives. So okay. All right. Well, Michael, but you know, you didn't so get what I said. What did I miss? There was no immediate sense of, of gratification that they were getting from the conversation. So I felt that they were more, um, when they were talking, it would be each person would talk in his own direction. That was what, what I'd rather do is, is, is pitch what I have in my head and put it out there, and then let's talk about okay. it differently. You know, it would be nice if you wouldn't interrupt me constantly right. as well. And, uh, they would kind of bounce, you know how they say they bounce ideas off each other, it was really kind of like that, They were, because they weren't absorbing each other's ideas, it was more like I bounce it and then it comes back and then I can play with it some more. And it was weird because I remember, you know, I began by talking to Rob and with Rob, and as the conversation went on, I was no longer talking to Rob, I was talking to Rob through the medium 
of the screen through this shared space of a conversation we were we were both creating or to be more precise all three of us were creating because Bernie was really facilitating that conversation so, so we want to try to capture that okay, okay. but I, I want to challenge something here Rob because I, I think you're making a, a forgive me for saying this a, a huge flawed market assumption but I think by the time that they really began to understand that they were really being listened to by this device that they, they I, I, I like to say that they saw themselves being heard. Uh, that things be, that's when things began to change. Okay, so I, I'm really neat. Uh, my the view secret, is the secret reason. By the way, you'll meet other people. Right. That's so, the secret reason. Yeah. yeah. But but, you, but this is a big decision how you market it though. Right. The audience. That's the, uh, I think that's an important. What's the verbiage the for that? The question was important and the answer was important because it's it's really you're really talking about a positioning statement yeah. here. But, so okay. okay. But, but can we just get that? Right. Uh, sure. We listed our priorities. We agreed on our priorities together. We, we brainstormed and filled up, filled up, you know, uh, the, 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 the board with hundreds of notions, and we put everything in this right little bucket, and there was no tension. We left with a printout, and that printout became a map to our, to our, uh, to our project. You know, one of the most dangerous things in communication is when the same words mean different things to different people, because then language becomes a vehicle to complicate and confuse rather than to clarify and enhance. That way. Terrific. Okay. And Great. You're right on that, Rob, for a change. And, um, you've got to type right eventually. <laughs> Something good will come out. Absolutely. Us. Absolutely. And so we were basically using this shared space as a filter to screen out certain ambiguities and to create a shared understanding of what it is we were trying to do. It took about two or three hours, and I think we've left feeling, wow, we, we got it. I mean, we, we know what we're doing now. It was, it was a very uh, uh, satisfying experience. This is such a simple, obvious thing to do. Why isn't this happening in more places and in, in, in more ways? The power of each personality, if it's really a truly collaborative environment, supports everybody else and empowers everybody else. That's a condition that I call co-liberation or, or mutual empowerment. Um, it's a rare condition, and it occurs only at some times in meetings. But when you have it, um, people really uh, explode. They, their, their ideas, they, they really feel that they're being listened to. And because they feel that they're being listened to, they hear themselves better.